Thank you for purchasing a Woodmizer portable sawmill. We think this mill will bring you many years of enjoyment as you begin to convert your own logs into valuable lumber. Use this DVD to review the basic assembly and operation for your new mill. You may want to view it once all the way through before beginning the actual assembly. Using this DVD in conjunction with the manuals provided should make this process go smoothly. If any additional questions come up along the way, feel free to contact our customer service department for assistance. To complement this assembly and operation DVD, be sure to consult your owner's manual for full safety and maintenance information. Before you begin assembling your LT-15, make sure no damage was done in shipment or that you are not missing any components. It will come as shown packaged on a wooden pallet. The first thing we're going to do is to remove the plastic shipping wrap from the pallet and sawmill. Next, cut the fabric straps that hold the bed sections and the head in place during travel. There should be three of them, two on the bed sections and one on the head section. These can be cut using a box knife or sturdy scissors. Always make sure you have proper eye protection when you cut these bands. They will be under pressure and will jump when cut. With the straps cut, you will need to lift the head of the mill up to its highest point. Do this by cutting the strap that is locking the handle into place. Make sure the handle locks into position before continuing. While on the back side of the mill, locate and remove the crank handle bracket and shipping plate. Set the crank handle aside. Just below the crank handle, locate and remove the push bar. Using the same bolts that held the crank handle into place, mount the bracket into its original position, ensuring that the push bar is also mounted into that same position. On the opposite side of the head mast assembly, remove the bolt that is securing the head into place. Squeeze the now released lever and rotate it clockwise to raise the head up all the way. Ensure that the handle firmly locks into place before continuing. At this time, remove all the boxes containing the mill hardware and blade. Set these aside for later use. Now you can remove the two bolts and shipping brackets holding the head to the pallet on the hand crank side of the mill. Make sure to remove both bolts and brackets. On the opposite side, remove the one bolt holding the shipping bracket to the pallet. Do not remove the shipping bracket at this time. This is a good time to remove the track wiper from its shipping location. The next step is to remove the complete head and mast assembly from the pallet. First, lower the head back down, which gets the center of gravity of the head assembly as low as possible. The required weight capacity of the equipment to lift this is 800 pounds minimum. This can be done with a forklift, hoist, or crane. Slowly start lifting the head. If it is not balanced, then lower and reposition to make sure it is properly balanced. Once the head is lifted high enough to clear the bed section, move it to a safe location until the bed assembly has been completed. With the head and mast assembly out of the way, you can now remove the gas tank from its shipping position on the pallet. Remove the bolt securing the gas tank and mounting plate to the pallet. The gas tank can now be set aside for later use. Now it's time to assemble the bed. Before removing the bed sections, the log clamps need to be released from their shipping positions. On the side of the pallet, cut the ties holding the clamps into place. Once loose, remove the bolt from one of the sides of the log clamp support. 
lift the support and slide the log clamp off of the support, rotate, and place the log clamp back onto the support as shown. Now replace the bolt that holds the log clamp support into place. This is the proper resting position for the log clamps. Repeat this step for the remaining log clamps. Once the log clamps are loose and repositioned, remove the two bolts holding the top bed section into place. Be careful, the bed section will drop several inches once these are removed. Each bed section weighs about 160 pounds. With two people, lift each bed section and position on a flat surface. Repeat the process for the second bed sections. Remove these bolts, lift the bed section, and place on a flat surface. For the last bed section, remove the two shipping plates that held the other bed sections in place. Then remove the four bolts securing the last bed section to the pallet. Lift the bed section and place on a flat surface. The bed sections need to be placed in the correct order before adding the leveling legs and securing together. Two of the bed sections have the log clamps already attached. These beds need to be placed into either positions two or three. The last bed section without the log clamps must always be in position one. This places the log clamps nearest to the center of the three bed sections. Ensure that the guide rail on each bed section is located on the same side before continuing. Next, pull two bed sections together. Make sure the alignment pins go inside the tubes. Insert the provided hex head bolt into the holes in the two cross members. These will use nylock hex nut. The bolts go on each side of both main bed rails. It takes two three-quarter inch wrenches to tighten these four bolts. Once you put two sections together, repeat the process to add the third bed rail. Next, install the main rail coupler. First, make sure the rails are tight against each other. If not, loosen one of the rails so that it will slide. Loosening the eight bolts that hold the rails onto the main tube will allow this adjustment to be made. Then install the connecting coupler using two hex head bolts. Gently tap the coupler using a rubber mallet to start into the holes provided. Tighten the hex head bolts evenly until snug. If the rail was loosened, retighten those eight bolts at this time. Then repeat this whole process to connect the last remaining bed section. After the bed is completed, make sure that the bed is lifted off the ground with enough space for you to work underneath it. It is time to break down the shipping container holding the trailer package. With a hammer, pry loose the boards at the top and sides of the pallet. Once the top and sides are removed, you can start unloading the pallet. Begin with placing the boxes aside for later. To begin removing the trailer pieces, you'll have to unbolt the brackets securing the pieces onto the pallet. Remove the bracket securing the hitch to the axle. Then remove the shipping bolts on the four shipping brackets and trailer chains. There will be six bolts in total. While in this area, cut the strap securing the hitch and axle to the pallet. The last step is to remove the wheel covers bolted to the pallet. Set these aside. We can now remove the pieces of the trailer. Start by pulling the trailer hitch out from under the axle and place at the front of the bed frame. With two people, lift the axle and place near the intersection of the last two bed sections. 
take the remaining mounting square piece and place near the intersection of the first and second bed sections. It is now time to unpack the boxes that were on the pallet. Discard the packaging material and unpack the outrigger supports, trailer lights, and packages containing all the necessary nuts and bolts. Place the outrigger supports as shown. Lastly, put the trailer lights at the rear of the bed sections. Set the remaining pieces aside for later use. Unpack the last box containing the trailer outriggers. Place the outriggers next to the outrigger supports for installation later. Starting at the front of the bed frame, take the first outrigger support and place on the underside of the bed. Secure the support to the existing brackets located on the inside of the bed frame. Use the provided bolts, spacers, and nuts. Make sure to tighten these bolts. Next is to move down to the square support. With help, lift and secure the support using the existing brackets, just as before. Use the provided bolts, spacer, and nut, tightening when all the bolts are in place. Next, move to the rear of the bed frame. Secure this bracket as you did with the first. Make sure to tighten all the bolts. For the next steps, you'll need to raise the bed further off the ground. This is easiest to achieve with a forklift, crane, or hoist. Once raised, you can now place four of the outriggers onto the supports. The outriggers can rotate up to 90 degrees, facing straight down when you're ready to cut, or parallel to the bed frame when you're ready to travel. Be sure to insert the locking pin to prevent the outriggers from moving in either position. Place two outriggers on both the front and rear supports. The last outrigger support can now be placed. It will be attached to the fifth bed rail from the rear. This support has wings that go on either side of the bed rail. Line up the holes and insert the bolt and washer. Place the nut on the other side and tighten the bolt. Make sure that the added bracket for the optional winch is on the rail side of the bed. When finished, place the outriggers and secure with a locking pin. We can now secure the axle to the bed. Lift the bed with the forklift for extra space when lining up the axle. Center the axle under the bed frame, lining up the interior brackets with the pre-drilled holes in the axle. Lower the bed so it sits on top of the axle. Secure the axle to the bed frame using the provided bolts, spacer, washer, and nut. There will be four to place and tighten. With the axle secured, you can now lower the outriggers and level the bed frame. Rotate the nut on the top of the outriggers counterclockwise to do this. You also no longer need the forklift to support the weight of the bed frame. Go ahead and lower the bed frame so its full weight rests on the outriggers. With the bed completed, we can now attach the tail lights and the hitch. Begin at the rear of the mill and feed the tail light cables through the bed frame as shown. Make sure the cables are pulled through to the opposite end. With the cables in place, you can now attach the tail light. Insert a bolt into the pre-drilled hold on the tail light. On the other side, place a spacer onto the bolt. Then insert the bolt into the mounting bracket. Make sure the groove in the tail light rests on the bed frame as shown. Use a washer and nut to secure into place. Repeat for the opposite side. There are two bolts in total. On the front of the bed frame, place the hitch onto the mounting pegs. Make sure the cables fit into the pre-cut groove to avoid pinching. Use the provided nuts and bolts to secure the hitch to the bed frame. There will be two on the inside of the bed frame and one on the outside. Leave the rail side bracket for next. 
On the rail side, insert the bolt into the bracket, and on the other side of the bracket, screw on a nut and a lock washer. Followed by the rope bracket, another washer, and a spacer. Turn the bolt until it comes out of the other bracket. Use a nut to secure and tighten into place. Plug the appropriate cables into the lights on the hitch. There will be a light on each side. Once plugged in, run the cables under the hitch frame and secure with zip ties to prevent them from hanging loose. Underneath the hitch, make sure the white grounding cable is held in place by the existing bolt and nut. Be sure to lead the remainder of the cable towards the hitch, leaving a long portion loose for connection to the vehicle. On the opposite end of the bed, install the other end stop. Make sure the bracket is tilted back so it holds the rope knot in place. Use the provided bolt, spacer, and washer to secure the end stop into place. Using a forklift, crane, or hoist, lift the head and mass assembly and place onto the bed. Slowly lower the head and have somebody guide the roller assemblies onto the bed rail. Make sure to pull the locking pins out so the mast will drop onto the bed rail. Once in place, remove the lower mast retaining bracket and shipping bracket from its packing position. Using the same hex head bolts and flat washers, reinstall the lower mast retaining bracket as shown. This bracket serves to secure the mast to the outer rail of the saw bed. The bracket should not actually contact the bed at any point. Then install felt rail wipers using the hex head bolt with flat washer and nuts. Make sure to pour Dextron 3 transmission fluid onto these felt wipers before installation. The felt wiper should be snug against the bed tube. Before installing the track wiper, remove the hex head bolts and flat washers from the inside of the head mast assembly. When you're ready to install the wiper, pour some Dextron 3 ATF transmission fluid onto the felt part of the wiper. This will keep the rail clean and lubricated. This will be held into place by using those previously removed hex head bolts and flat washers. Next, install the track scrapers to each end of the head assembly by using the provided hex head bolts and flat washers. As you tighten with a 9-16 inch wrench, make sure each scraper is firmly against the rail. This will help prevent sawdust from building up on the rail and the bed tube. Take the included travel pin and remove the bolt and securing pin, which dangles from the wire looped onto the bolt. The travel pin slides over the blade adjustment arm bracket. Once in place, return the bolt and securing pin as it was before. The securing pin will hang free from the bolt. Now, install the rotating travel pin base. Use the provided bolt and nut to secure into place. Don't tighten too much or the base will not rotate. The head can now lower and the travel pin will rest into its base using the securing pin to prevent the head from lifting during travel. There is a hole in the travel pin for this. Since the mill is raised off the ground, we need to lower the dial and crank that raises and lowers the head. To do this, go to the chain located beneath the hand crank and remove the master chain link using pliers. Once unhooked, remove the chain from its holding place. With the master link removed, we can adjust the dial at the top. On the back of the dial, remove the two bolts holding the gearbox cover. Set the cover aside. With the cover removed, now remove the two bolts located on either side of the chain gear shaft. Be careful, when removing the second bolt, the dial will rotate downwards. Keep hands on the outside of the dial and slowly rotate it. After rotation, remove the bolt nearest the center. Line up the bolt holes and replace this bolt, now going through the orange bracket. Also, replace the three other bolts in this area.
With those four in place, remove the fifth bolt on the bottom that we left on earlier. There will be two empty bolt spots at the bottom. Place the provided orange cover over the exposed gears. Take the lower portion of this cover and place over the last two remaining bolt holes. Secure into place using the bolts that came from the gearbox and orange cover. There are four, two on the front and one on each side. Be sure to tighten these bolts. Replace the chain to its original position and secure back into place using the master link that was removed earlier. With that complete, take the reflector stickers and place on the bed frame. Two yellow ones go on either side of the hitch end and two red ones go on either side of the rear. The remaining two reflectors go on the head of the mill. Lastly, place the LT15 GO stickers on the top of the head mast assembly. Now we're ready to finish assembly. Tie a knot on one end of the rope. Hook that knot into the bracket, then start routing the rope through the mast. Make sure you go over top of the pin and around the inside groove of the lower idler roller closest to the bed rail. Bring it up to your crank handle pulley, go over the top and loop around two times toward the feed handle. Then go to the outside groove of the lower idle roller. Then back through the mast, once again making sure that you are over the top of the retaining pin. Pull the remaining rope back to the rear of the mill. Tie a knot in the rope and put into the rope bracket. If the rope is too loose, the feed handle will slip. To tighten, remove and retie the knot closer to the saw head until tight. With the sawmill nearly complete, we can add the included rollers to the bed side supports. These rollers should go onto the three side supports nearest the log clamps. First, insert the bronze bushings inside the six provided rollers. Then take the provided bolt and slide on a washer followed by the roller and bushing, then another washer. Insert the bolt with roller into the hole pre-drilled into the side support. On the opposite side of the support, slide on a washer, roller and bushing, then another washer. Secure all of these into place using the provided nylock nut. Repeat these steps for the remaining two side supports. Now hook up the battery cables to the appropriate battery post. The red terminal should be connected to the positive post of the battery and the black connected to the negative post of the battery. Once connected, reinstall the battery cover and secure with the strap provided. If your mill comes with the power feed option, please hook in the wires at this time. Before installing the mounted gas tank, remove the two bolts, nuts, and washers from the pre-drilled mounting holes on the head mast assembly. Take the gas tank that was set aside earlier and mount it to the inside of the head mast assembly using the same bolt, nut, and washers. Tighten these bolts to secure the gas tank to the head mast assembly. Once the gas tank has been properly mounted, cut the straps holding the water and gas tubes to the head of the sawmill. Take the clear water tube and push it onto the spout of the white water container. Take the two black tubes and lead them to the gas tank. The smaller or thinner tube goes onto the spout with the smaller diameter. The larger of the tubes goes onto the spout with the larger diameter. Loosen the metal fastener on the fuel tube and slide it over the area where the spout enters the tube. Retighten and fasten to ensure the fuel tube is tight and does not slip off of the spout. There is one fastener per tube. 
When installing the blade, always make sure to wear gloves and safety glasses. Open the two blade wheel covers and insert the blade. Make sure the blade is on the outside of the two blade wheels and under both blade guides. Once the blade is in position, tension the blade by rotating the blade tension handle counterclockwise until it is locked into position. Ensure that the end of the alignment bracket is aligned with the washer. If not, untension the blade, rotate the bolt slightly, and retension the blade. Repeat this process until the alignment is achieved. Lastly, remove the sawdust guide from its packaging position and using the same bolts and nuts, reattach it facing in the opposite direction so that the sawdust is guided toward the floor. If you purchased the optional manual winch, you can install that now. If not, proceed to the LT15 operation. First, unpack the pallet by removing the bolts and straps securing the pieces into place. The loading rails can be taken and placed onto the resting brackets on the other side of the bed frame, as shown. Now remove the winch and mounting bracket and place next to the axle. Take the winch mounting bracket and secure it into place on the rail side of the mill, right in between the axle and outrigger support. Use the provided bolts and nuts to tighten into place using the existing pre-drilled holes. Once tight, lift the winch and hold into place against the bracket. Slide the large pin through the bracket and the winch. Secure with the provided washer and locking pin. With that piece locked, rotate the winch upwards and let drop into place. That concludes our assembly. Please check your user manual for more details on this process, or you can always call Woodminds or customer service if you have any more questions.